A Letter from Nana The letter was sealed with pressed wax from a stamp with the family crest. Written on the outside, open immediately upon leaving the office. The lawyer had just handed it to me, and I was trembling with anxiety to, to open it. He was still talking to me. I thought, I need to listen more intently. The last will and testament has specific details as to the transfer of the company and all her assets to you. It also states that this letter must be opened by you and you alone after you leave the office. My great-grandmother, who we called Nana, was the last living member of her family of eight brothers and sisters. She was from the Philippines and had lived to be 102. We, my brothers and sisters, cousins and all our relatives knew the stories of our great-grandfather, Papa. However, we never met him. You see, Nana was 20 when she met Papa, who was 58 at that time. She told us such great stories of the love she had for Papa and the fun they had while he was alive. She called him her perfect accident. Scurrying out of the office, I had to read that this letter. Nana had always told me that one day I would understand why all the boys didn't understand my crazy jokes. Would the letter tell me anything about that? She'd say, you are very intelligent, and sometimes other people won't understand you. Just always remember, no matter what anyone says, you are a member of this family, and we have faith in each other. Faith was so strong in our family. Faith in God. Faith that good would always prevail. And yes, faith in each other. As I approached the exit, I could see the rain was coming down so hard now. I put the letter in my jacket pocket to keep it dry as I ran across the parking lot to the car. I was now soaking wet as I climbed into my car. But I knew the letter would be dry. I would read it when I got home. I had to focus on the road, which was something Nana insisted upon that we always focus on the road when driving. She would tell us stories about how Papa would talk to her on the phone when he was on his way to work every day and long trips. And it made her so nervous that she would tell him, please focus on the road while you are driving. Home was on the other side of the city, so I decided I had better pick up some things along the way as it was getting late in the afternoon. I would have to prepare dinner upon my arrival. I wanted to stop and read the letter, but it was raining so much I decided to wait. Waiting would be okay, Nana would say. Good things come to those who wait. Another time she told me, Papa and I waited a year and a month before we were able to meet because of a pandemic amidst other happenstances that life threw at us. I knew I could wait until I got home. I felt the water splatter on the side of my face, so I rolled up my window to prevent the rain from entering. I was so focused on driving and thinking about Anna's letter, I didn't even realize my window had been down a little bit. The rain was not letting up, so I parked close to the door entrance and ran in. I stayed, I stayed up and down the aisle, constantly thinking about the letter. What could Nana have possibly written in that letter? Was I going to learn something about her I didn't know? I saw Milo on the shelf in the same aisle as Rice. 
and I started to laugh out loud. I never heard Nana say it, but my mama would tell me that Papa would prepare a cup of Milo and a bowl of rice every morning before he would go to work. Then he continued to do that until he retired. Mama would say, my dad, your Papa, loved Nana more than life itself. You see, Papa had been married twice before, we were told. Once when he was very young, for three years. Then again, for 29 years, when she, his second wife, died from medical troubles. They say, and don't ask me who they are, but it is said around our family that Nana told Papa she had talked to Papa's second wife in prayer and told her that she would take such great care of him until death do they part as the story is told she gave her the blessings and Nana knew at that moment her and Papa would be together forever I grabbed my aloe and rice and headed to the counter with the rest of my groceries I had eggs, milk and some food for Bandit my dog as I approached the exit I let out a little yell. Yay, it has stopped raining. I would read my letter in the car. My feet were moving much faster and when I ran into the, than when I ran into the store in the rain. I could feel the anxiety and anxiousness starting to build in my chest and in my head again. I missed my Nana so much. And to have a letter from her now was so exciting to me. Once in the car, I reached into my pocket to pull out the letter, but the letter was not there. Silly me, I said out loud. I reached into the wrong pocket, I'm sure. However, when I went to the other pocket, it was not there as well. Was it on the floor? I asked myself. I searched frantically throughout the car. I was now beside myself in wonderment of where I had lost my letter. I ran back into the store and retraced my steps to no avail. Perhaps it had fallen out of my pocket when I left the lawyer's office. Upon arrival at the lawyer's office again, I searched the parking lot and the lot next to the lawyer. I began to cry. How could I have lost the last words to me from my Nana if I never find this letter? I will never know what she had to tell me. I sobbed so hard as I drove all the way home. As I sat in my car in the driveway, I bowed my head and prayed for forgiveness from God and from Nana. I was still crying as I entered my house. Bandit, me at the door. And I began to tell him the story of what I had done. Yes, me talking to my dog. I picked him up and hugged him as I cried. I looked his, at his eyes and could tell he knew I was sad. Nana always told me, never put off something you can do right now. Why did I not read that letter as I was directed to? Directly after leaving the lawyer's office, I'll never put things off ever again. Perhaps... The words of wisdom I expected to find in that letter were not meant to be in my possession to begin with. Perhaps God's plan for me did not include the note I dearly wanted to read now. Perhaps there was a supernatural reason for all this happening to me during one of the happiest times in my life, coming of age, 18 years old. I would be okay if I kept my faith and believed. While I pondered this, I began cooking and was just about to sit down alone to dine when there was a knock at the door. The police were at the door. How may I help you? I directed the question to the first officer at the door. He proceeded to ask me if he could speak to me with regards to an accident that happened earlier that day. There were two officers, and the rain was picking up again, so I invited them both inside to talk. 
An older couple had been driving down the highway when out of nowhere some trash hit their windshield and got stuck in the windshield wipers. The elderly man was driving and immediately stopped on his brakes, causing the vehicle to skid and slide off the road. Neither of the couple were injured and there was no damage to the car or the road. The elderly man took the trash off his windshield wipers and called the police, which of course was the correct thing to do. The police officer continued with his story of how the events of the accident occurred. Then he pulled the evidence, the trash from the accident, from his pocket, and I began to cry. Officer, that piece of trash is a letter from my Nana that must have flown out my window when I was looking the other way. I have spent the last three hours looking for that letter. May I have it, please? The officer said, yes. That the couple were not pressing charges. However, they did get the license plate off my car and wanted the police to bring the letter to me because they had read the front of it where it said, open immediately upon leaving the office. A letter, and the letter was unopened and was still unopened. The couple said to the police they felt as though they were meant to catch that letter and wanted it returned to its rightful owner. I felt as though I was truly witnessing a miracle happening right before my eyes. I said goodbyes to the officers and went to the dining room table to sit down to read my letter. Was it a miracle the letter came back to me? Was it some supernatural power bringing the letter to me? Was Nana responsible somehow for getting the letter back to me? I may never know that answer. However, now I'm reading my letter. It read, My dearest Natalia, If you are reading this, I am with Papa now watching over you, and I love you more than you can know. I have left you everything, because I know you will take care of the family and keep the business in the family. I left direct instructions for you, and I know you probably will not follow them to the letter, but that's okay. Your faith is strong, and Papa and I are watching over you.